Hello everybody, this is Tiffany with the Speak Up and Inspire series. Um, I am going to invite Katrina because she is actually going to be interviewing me tonight on the Speak Up and Inspire series. So let's go ahead and invite Miss Katrina now. Hi Felicia. Hi Rodney. While we are waiting for Katrina to come on, I just wanted to say thank you to both Katrina um, and Alicia for sharing their stories of being domestic violence survivors. Um, we missed our interview um, with Toynia, but hopefully we will be able to get her interview in within the next week or two so we can talk to her about being a survivor as well and also providing safe places for domestic violence victims um, when they are needing resources and um, services to help them on their journey to healing from domestic violence. So right now we are waiting for Katrina to join us. And while we are waiting for Katrina, this is Domestic Violence and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We are coming to the end of the this awareness month. So I'm interested to know if you are a domestic violence survivor, if you can go ahead and type that in the comments with DV Survivor here so that we can see how many survivors we have listening tonight. And also, if you are a breast cancer survivor, um, I want you to put in the comments, check your tatas, check your tatas so that we can see that you are a survivor as well. If you know a survivor of domestic violence or sexual assault, we would love for you to type in the comments support so that we can see that you are there and available to whoever it is that you know personally who is a domestic violence or breast cancer survivor. And we are waiting for Katrina to join us so that she can start our interview out tonight. But again, if you are a domestic violence survivor, put in the comments, I am a survivor. If you are a breast cancer survivor, type in check your tatas. And if you know someone who is a breast cancer or a domestic violence survivor, please put in the comments, I support. So that way we know who you are listening tonight with us. So we are waiting for Katrina to join us, and Katrina is also a domestic violence survivor. Hi, Katrina. I'm going to invite you right now. Miss Katrina, violence survivor. And so while she is interviewing me, I'm going to be interviewing her <laughs> so that we can talk about being advocates and what it is that we are doing in the community to help other victims. Hi, Ms. Katrina. How, How are, are you? you? I'm, I'm good, doing girl. okay. Not <laughs> hot today. I came in and I took a nap and woke up so I can talk to you. And then I'm going right back to sleep. <laughs> it's acting crazy. <laughs> can yeah, you hear it'll me? It'll work now? itself out. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you clearly. It's messing up. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Sis? Yes. yes, I can hear you. I can hear you keep clearly. Can you hear me at all? Uh-oh, we lost her. Okay, so um, again, while we are trying to get Katrina on the line, if you are a survivor, type I am a survivor in the comments comments check your tatas and if you know someone who is a survivor of breast cancer or domestic violence type in the comments I support so that we can see who is watching tonight it is domestic violence and breast cancer awareness month and we are going to be talking um, together with uh, Katrina Thomas who is also a survivor 
Hello, Matthew. Thank you for being a warrior. Hello, uh, Matthew. Would definitely love to hear your story if you're interested in sharing. I will reach out to you so that we can talk to hopefully hear your story one day. All right, let's see if we can get her on here. There she is. Let's see. Hi, Devon, how are you? Hi, Kendra. We are waiting for Miss Katrina to connect with us as we end out Domestic Violence and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. All right, Katrina, I just sent you an invite for you to co-host with me. If you have any questions and you are a survivor and you are interested in being an advocate or sharing your story with people in the community, please reach out to myself or Katrina after this interview so that we can talk to you about how you can join us in sharing your story of being a domestic violence survivor. There is so much that is going on in our local government, as well as state governments, national governments, um, where we need people that are survivors who are ready to share their story. So Matthew, I would love to talk to you at, after the interview or whenever you're ready about being a survivor and possibly sharing your story. Um, we definitely do need more men um, to join this fight with us. I think that it is um, important that men speak up about their, um, their experiences and that they share their experiences because a lot of men do not speak up. A lot of men um, hold in what has happened to them um, out of fear for um, people seeing them as being weak because of a woman being their abuser, um, also because of the stigma behind, um, uh-oh. I'll send it to you again, Katrina. Give me one second. Um, hi, Shy. How are you? Hello, Willie. How are you? Come on with me. Um, we already had this. Um, we already had this interview scheduled for tonight. And so the Speak Up and Inspire series, we are live every Monday at 8 p.m. Um, we are actually, God willing and God blessed, um, we are booked all the way up until February for interviews, but Matthew, I always make time for special interviews so that we can get your story in and other people can hear your story. So I will send you a message when this is over, when this interview is over, to talk to you about sharing your story with me live on another date for a special interview just for you. I'm doing good, Shy. Not feeling too well, but I am blessed and I'm alive. So thank you so much. Looking forward to your interview. We're doing a special interview with Shy um, next month, early next month, so that we can talk about all that she is going through and how the healthcare system can be very um, hmm, discouraging to say the least, and I can attest to that, especially when you're dealing with either an undiagnosed illness or disorder, um, but even diagnosed disorder. So we're going to be doing a special interview with Shy next month. Um, the lineup for the Speak Up and Inspire series will be posted tonight. Another invite. Hopefully we can get her on the line. Waiting for Miss Katrina. Um, so again, if you are a survivor of domestic violence, then Katrina, I can say that if you are on a computer and you're trying to connect your laptop or desktop, 
it is not going to let you join. Um, if you can get on your cell phone and try to join, because for some reason you cannot do a two-way um, live interview on Facebook Live. You have to use your cell phone. So I see that you're trying to join. Um, meanwhile, if you are a survivor of domestic violence, if you can type in the comments, I am a survivor. Um, if you are a survivor of breast cancer, please type in the comments, check your tatas. And if you are someone that knows a survivor of breast cancer or domestic violence, if you can type, I support so that we can see who you are. All right. I see you, Katrina. Um, this month month. Um, it started off with the rally in Washington, D.C. Um, it was a rally that was, um, excuse me, that was planned for us to be able to have a domestic violence registry. So if you are familiar with the um, sex offender registry, there are very prominent people families of survivors and survivors as well who are working on trying to get a domestic violence registry. And so a lot of us have been banding together to share our stories and also to be able to help with some of the things that are going on on the political level that we can help with as survivors. So one, starting a domestic violence registry, also banning the use of or having firearms in the homes of domestic violence abusers or those who have been convicted of being abu abusers. There are also a lot of reform going on about how the state or county police departments and sheriff offices are responding to domestic violence and how they are handling domestic violence. So this month was very, very, very huge when it came to the, the fight against domestic violence. Um, I know that Katrina herself, she had a rally in Georgia that we are going to talk to her briefly about. If we can get her on here. <laughs> um, so there were so many things that happened this month. Um, do not want to happen is that we do not want that October was full of all these efforts and then the efforts cease because it's domestic violence. Month. What we want is for all of the efforts of victims, survivors, organizations, grassroots organizations, community leaders, and politicians to continue the fight against domestic violence, for reform, for better laws, for uh, domestic violence registry, for so many other um, ways that we can help victims of domestic violence, but also to change the laws, to change the way people see domestic violence, to let abusers um, and offenders know that they cannot continuously get away with abusing victims whether it be in their homes, whether it be stalking, and then adding charges on top of charges on top of charges so that abusers and um, offenders are held accountable for their actions in more than one way. Um, so there are so many reforms that are going on. If you are not familiar with the fight against domestic violence, which I'm sure you are, because unfortunately, the fight against domestic violence only grabs attention when somebody high profile is a victim. So we have all the cases of um, R. Kelly that are out there. And even though those are sexual assault charges and um, other charges that are similar to sexual assault and relationships, it also can be characterized as domestic violence. Um, any abuse that is happening within the home, whether it be physical, emotional, mental, uh, sexual, financial, um, all of those are can fall under domestic violence. Um, we've had a lot of very, very public domestic violence cases that have been out there. Um, one in particular that really stood out to me was the um, uh, Chris Brown um, 
the Chris Brown charges with him and Rihanna. And since then, he has also had more domestic violence charges that have been pressed against him. Um, so we do have a lot of high profile cases. What are some high profile ca cases that really caught your attention? Would love to hear what high profile cases caught your attention um, in regards to domestic violence. Um, unfortunately, domestic violence does not get national attention until it happens among a famous person or a celebrity. There are a lot out there, um, R. Kelly, Chris Brown, um, I can't think of the football player right now. Um, we had uh, Beyonce's sister. <laughs> There's so many high profile cases out there. And the only time we domestic violence ever receives high profile coverage or a lot of coverage in the news is when it happens among people that are considered celebrities or are community leaders or someone that we see on TV or in the movies or here on the radio. Um, a lot of times cases do not go public because they're our neighbors. And so we need to speak up more about domestic violence. We need to make sure that it's not only not only celebrities or high profile people who um, are in the news about domestic violence, but also the 70, 80 plus people that died right here in Mecklenburg County or right here in North Carolina last year. Um, those people probably are unknown to you um, if you do not live locally. Um, but those are faces that deserve to receive the national attention, to be part of the chain of um, victims who lost them, their lives to home to domestic violence related homicides. So we are constantly fighting the fight. Um, being a survivor, um, it's not for notoriety, notoriety, I cannot talk tonight, <laughs> um, not to become a celebrity. It's not to be in um, the face of domestic violence. It's about sharing our stories, um, getting our stories out there so that people can know that you can fight this, you can get out of abusive relationships. And for us to just be able to be a testimony, a living testimony of surviving domestic violence. Hi, Katrina. Hi, <laughs> sis. It was so frustrating. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. It happens. It happens to the best of us. And the devil was trying to work, but he ain't going to stop us. <laughs> I'm going to let you take over. Good evening, everybody. My name is Katrina. Good to be here today night to interview Tiffany Sunshine Brown, my sister. I, I words are there, but there's so many words I can say, and I don't want to take up the whole interview. But tonight is about her and about her sharing her story, sharing about how she, well, these great things that she's doing in the community. Uh, I just got to say, Tiffany, how are you tonight, baby? How are you? Hey, baby, I am not feeling too hot. I'm not feeling too hot, but I was looking forward to seeing your beautiful face and talking to you. So that's, yeah. that's my pep for the day, seeing you. You. <laughs> you see, you guys, that's what I mean. She's so great. But you know what? You're even greater in what you're doing. So tell me a little about Tiffany. Can you hear me? Um, can you hear me? Well, I'm a mom. I can hear you. <laughs> um, I'm a mom. I have um, my two twins, Heaven and Devin. Um, they're 11 years old. Um, I'm also going to school right now to finish my master's for my LPC to become a licensed mental health counselor. And then I am an advocate. I'm a survivor. I'm an author. I'm a speaker. So many different things that I'm doing. <laughs> And this is what I mean, ladies and gentlemen. She is a woman of many trades and, you know, just empowering and encouraging. So, Tiffany, being that I know about this wonderful organization, Butterfly Vision Project, tell me, off of your journey and off of your survival story, how did we get to Butterfly Vision Project? Um, I started off talking uh, a couple of years ago, probably about five years ago, um, about my story 
to um, to someone that was just sitting next door to me in the doctor's office. Um, and she was talking to me about how she wanted to do more in the community. And I was telling her that um, I would like to share my story more about being a survivor. Um, but I was also talking to my counselor because I go to counseling myself. Um, it was something that I needed to do to continue on my road to being a, um, a survivor and healing from what I've been through. And she also encouraged me to speak up and start talking about my story and, and what I had been through. So um, that's how I started talking about my story and just kind of sharing the things that I had been through, not just with domestic violence, but um, with sexual assault and um, child abuse and so forth and so on. And so I was able to um, start talking at local organizations about my story. And just from there, Butterfly Visions grew. Um, I started networking. I met a lot of very, very amazing advocates. Um, Iris Benton was one of the first persons who I, um, I met and started talking to about sharing my story. And so just from there, it's just taken off from there. Um, I do it because it's therapeutic for me, but also because there's just so many people out there that don't speak up and don't share their stories. And so I just want to kind of be a role model for those who are surviving and who are doing um, well, who are thriving, who, um, you know, are willing to share. I just want to be someone that they can say, you know, I can do this too. I can share my story. Okay. And you know, that that's very amazing. And I applaud you for doing all of that. When you say, let's back up a little bit, because I kind of went ahead faster instead of starting right at the beginning. When you were going okay. through your sexual abuse and um, mental, emotional, all of this, during that time, what were you thinking and where were you? It's a two-part question. And where were you going with it? Like when you knew you were ready to step out, and, and, and mm -hmm. say, look, I want to talk about it. I want to express it because it's going to heal me. What what was going through your mind at that point in time? Through our weakest time is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, I think it was in those moments when I looked at my children and saw that I needed to be stronger for them. Um I think that's what did it. My kids really saved me. And I can say that, and I, I will continue to say that, that my, my kids saved me um, because I didn't want them to um, be in a, in a household with someone that was broken. Um, and so, and for me to actually um, share my story with the very few people that I did who told me to continue sharing my story. Um, that is how I saw that talking about my story was therapy for me. Um, just knowing that there might be somebody that's listening that I might be able to help um, was therapeutic for me. Um, also, you know, taking a moment, taking time for myself um, to just be single and to go to therapy, um, to work on being a stronger woman um, for myself and not for anybody else other than my kids. Um, those were all of the things that motivated me to start talking, um, even in the point where, um, you know, even in the point where I was a victim. Um, I had to realize that being a victim um, was not where I wanted to be. I, I didn't want to be a victim anymore. I wanted to be able to put my head up and um, be proud of the fact that I got out of an abusive relationship that could have killed me, um, that I was able to um, survive so many different relationships that were abusive for me. Um, every single relationship that I was in from my, I have to say second boyfriend to all the way up to probably 10 years ago was abusive. 
um, my very first real boyfriend, um, he met me after I was in foster care. And in foster care, I met um, a young man who believed in me that didn't care about what my past was. Um, but I wasn't ready for that kind of love. I wasn't ready for someone to love me unconditionally. And so him and I broke up or I broke up with him and I just continuously was in one bad relationship after another. Um, and with each bad relationship, I kept losing a, a part of myself that, um, just, I, I, I lost myself. I didn't recognize who I was anymore. Um, and then it took for me to have my kids for me to say, you know, of being fearful. I'm tired of not trusting anyone um, with my heart. I'm tired of not being able to love completely because I was so worried about being hurt um, that just enough became enough. Um, I had two suicide attempts that I lived through. And so just talking and sharing and just someone listening to my story and and giving me positive af affirmations and encouraging me was what I needed. It was what I needed to start healing for myself, for my kids, um, for other people out there that wanted to listen. So um, that is what started me um, as an advocate for domestic violence. Um, that is what started my journey. Healing. Um, and I think that everybody has a story and everyone has a reason for, uh-oh, sorry, Chantel. Um, I think everybody has a story and a reason for why they share their stories or why they become advocates. But for me, um, that was it. It was me just needing to heal and just being tired, tired of being used up, tired of being hurt, tired of not being able to trust, tired of not being able to love because I was, I was still in victim mode. I needed to get myself right. together. Yeah. When yeah. you're in victim mode, that's what we tend to do. We, we, we feel lost and we have to find ourselves again and we have to love ourselves again, most importantly. And, you know, I think just you and I have such common things in common when it comes to this, because we both were looking for love in the wrong places and we circle some mm -hmm. same grounds of, you know, going through this trauma. And I think, yeah. you know, with that trauma, it, it can it can damage you, but you can heal from it. Would you agree that we can heal with it? Yeah, um, I, I definitely agree. I think that, you know, all of us go through the phase of, and, and, it, and it is a phase, it's a cycle, and I, everybody has to go through it. So you, you're, you've gone through the abu abuse. Um, there's always that honeymoon phase where your abuser or the offender becomes so sweet and apologizes and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. And then it takes something small to set them off again. And now they're hurting you or abusing you. They're hitting you or something like that. Um, and then you just get tired. You just get tired of the, the broses, the, the, the broses, <laughs> the bruises, <laughs> um, yes. the emotional abuses, the, um, the emotional scars, the mental scars, um, the physical ones. Um, and I really don't, I don't, think that that one form of abuse is worse than the other um i know it's sometimes i used to say i would rather you hit me than to call me mm -hmm. a bitch or to call me a hoe or call me a whore or tell right. me i'm fat right. or tell me i'm not good but every abuse no matter if it's emotional mental physical whatever it is it's it leaves a lasting impression on you no matter yes. what form it is. yes it really um, does it does. And, you know, something else that I realize is that a lot of people start, you know, feeling like there's nobody that can love them or that they can't find any, anyone going forward who's going to love them with real love. We find it hard to accept love, even if we do find a good person. Sometimes mm -hmm. that person is so damaged that they can't even accept real love when it's really genuine. Did you go That's through true. that as well? Oh yeah, I, I did over and over again. I was just mentioning my first um, 
real boyfriend. His name was Andre. And he was the first man that ever really loved me for who I was with the the scars and the bruises and all and my past. Um, But I wasn't ready for it. And I messed it up. I messed it up bad. I cheated on him. I lied to him. I, Mm. I disappear for, you know, days and one time because I, I loved him, but I couldn't accept his love. I couldn't, I didn't understand it. I didn't understand why he loved me so much. Um, and so I, I messed it up. I messed it up really, really bad. And, um, you know, we're friends till this day and he stuck okay. there. For me. He stuck there for me from the time, you know, I was in other abusive relationships. He was always there to pick me back up. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would run to all the wrong guys, all the bad boys. And they were and all like- Right. And all those bad boys, all those bad (laughs) boys you thought were good boys, but they really was bad boys. When you go through any type of abuse or you go through any, anything in life, it turns you into somebody who you don't want to be, but you can't help but become that person because of how you feel about yourself. And I think, I think, you know, when you can recover over your damaged goods you have with yourself, it's only mm-hmm. when you can really decide to say, I want to go forward in another relationship. I think you and I, we have learned the hard way how yeah. to find real love and how to accept ourselves for who we are and deal with that new person that we're trying to become. And we have became that, actually. Mm-hmm. We became that because we're survivors now. And you know, what I applaud you about is that look at all these great things you're doing. Just tell me out of all of this experience, Tiffany, and all these things that happened to you, why are you where you are today? Why are you this remarkable woman that I admire? (laughs) Um, I think it's the support of, of, um, other survivors and other advocates like you. Um, just knowing that I'm not alone. I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. Um, even for for people that are still you know victims and they're still dealing with what they're dealing with you 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 feel alone a lot of times um but I don't feel alone I know that I can call you I know I can call Irish I know that I can call you know Alicia I know I can call and you guys will pick up the phone and you will talk to me and you'll support me um I also love that when I go somewhere and I speak and I take the twins that they are just so proud of me for sharing so much yes. of myself. And yeah. you know, there's been times that the twins have learned about things just by coming and hearing me speak. And my son told right. me last week, he was like, Mommy, you have been through so much. And it just brought tears to my eyes because he recognized that, you know, I'm <laughs> sorry. Um Aww. no, that's real. That's real. Don't say sorry for your real feelings. That's real. Mm-hmm. I'd rather you be real. Yeah, but, you know, just hearing from my son, you know, mommy, you've been through so much and I'm so proud of you. It, it just makes, it makes everything worth it to, to be transparent, to share who I am, to share, you know, my journey. Um, it makes it worth it when my kids say they're proud of me. Right. And, and, and I know that, that is, that's, that's mm-hmm. very important. And you know what else is important? That you're showing them now how not to make any mistakes like you made, especially having a daughter. And, you know, I've seen interviews where you said, my daughter looks so much like me and she does, <laughs> she does. <laughs> you know, and I know that makes you think back and say, well, you know what? I don't want her to go through anything like I've been through. So what are some of the things that you're doing with heaven, which is my mentee <laughs> uh, that you're doing to show her that you don't have to use your body you don't have to dress a certain way to attract a man. What are you doing as far as your son and your daughter to teach them not to fall or follow the same steps you did with certain things that you fell into as far as abuse and dating? Um, I try to first teach them respect for themselves. Um, and I talk to them all the time. You know, they're they're children. They're in middle school now. You know, they're they might have girls or boys that they like. And I t- and I tell them, you know, it's okay to be attracted to people in school or girls and boys, so forth and so on. I st- but I do talk to them about, you know, 
you're only 11 years old. Getting into a relationship is just not a good time. You're in, you're not mature enough to handle those kind of relationships. You need to focus on you. Um, I, t- I talked to my son about holding the door for me, holding the door for his, his sister when we're out in public, holding the door for the women that are, you know, maybe walking beside him or be- behind him. Um, you know, talking to heaven about, um, you know, not allowing anyone to disrespect her, call her out of her name. Um, I talked to my son about not calling his sister names, calling other women names. So just, you know, just kind of share with them um, ways to respect themselves, ways to respect others. Um, But then also to let them know that when it's time for a relationship, those are the times when you're looking for your mate. That's someone that you're looking forward to marry. You don't just jump from one relationship to another. Thank Um, you. You you just don't do that. You, when you start dating, you're dating in in mind with the view to who's going to be your future, who's going to be your husband, who's going to be your wife. Um, And then most importantly, that um, you have to love yourself first. You have to love yourself before you can give your 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 time and attention um, to someone else. Love yourself and speak up for yourself. Um, because exactly. they've heard all the things that I've been through, I, I teach them a lot. We go through scenarios like, well, what would you do if you went to a party and a boy tried to, to try to touch you? What would you do? Or, you know, with my son, what would you do if you saw someone being hurt or hit or called a bad name? So we go through scenarios of, you know, ways that they can handle things that they they might face. Hopefully they don't, so, but how right. to protect them, how to speak up. So with your children, and, you know, I know this much, you get them involved with things that you do in the community. And uh, how do your children feel when they're out there with you and doing these positive things to give back to others and to put them on alert about abuse mentally, physically, and all of that? How do your children react to that? Do you see them react to it as them giving just as much love and compassion as you give? Yeah, um, they're very much people, people, you know, little kids, they, no, they're not little anymore. They're my babies, but they love people. They love helping people. Um, my daughter, if, if you ask me in front of either one of them, what does mommy do? They usually interrupt me and they can tell you what Butterfly Visions Project is. They can tell you about my book. They can tell you about domestic violence. They can tell you about sexual assault. So they, they're learning they're taking it all in. Um, I know they've even talked. To, they've even talked to their friends about it, about domestic violence oh, and sexual wow. assault, and feeding the That's homeless. Awesome. They love feeding the homeless. They love going to the, to senior bingo with us. They look forward to it. So, um, yeah, I think I think we have um, two advocates in training right now. <laughs> Now, see, that's that's exactly what I like because that's what I I saw from your children when I was there, when we did the um the hugs um, campaign mm-hmm. and giving out yeah. the food to the homeless. I saw that in your children, and that really made me smile because if we had more children involved mm-hmm. in with giving back to the community, understanding why we're giving back to the community, don't mm-hmm. you know this would be such a great world. Because our younger people would see nothing but positivity instead of all of the negative stuff that we see in the world. And I um, I have to say, you know, hands down to you, I'm proud of you for that, for getting your children involved um, in your organization. So what I want to do now, I want to skip to this positive book, Reality Check, which I have. <laughs> tell me what inspired, I know what inspired you, but girl, tell me, that book was too deep. <laughs> That book was just too deep. <laughs> I, I, had, I read that book and then I put it down and I was like, no, go pick it up again, girl. Picked it up and I said, woof. It was something serious. <laughs> I had to make you laugh. I wanted to see that pretty small because you were getting some tears. I had to bring it back up and make you smile. So. Well, thank so, you because I'm a big guy, baby. <laughs> Part of it that you can break down for the people because if you don't, I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, I have a copy with me. So this is my book, okay. Reality. Um, I am actually um, 
working on an uncut version. So there's going to be a little bit more spice in it. Ooh, <laughs> when I, I'll be the first one to get one. <laughs> when I released the uncut version, um, because I kind of simmered it down a little bit because I knew family was going to be reading my book, but all that right. stuff is coming back for the uncut version. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it starts off really I can't strong. Wait. <laughs> it uh it starts off really really strong um it's a story of um a sexual assault survivor and my book is really based on my experiences um i haven't been able for some reason i haven't been able to write my own story but in first person I don't know why I haven't been able to write it. So what I did is I wrote my story using characters and the characters are similar to myself. They're very similar to all of the people that I encountered in my life um, during these experiences. So every character in my book is um, representative of someone real, every single character. Yes, Um, it is. Yeah, so I think maybe maybe one or two were made up, but they also share some kind of experience from my life. So every character okay. um, in my book is actually someone real to me. Um, but it starts it starts out very very strong, and it just goes from there. Um, it has a lot going on, um, a lot of drama, a lot of spiciness. Um, a lot of very strong characters, male and female. So it's not yes. just for women to read. It's also for men. I've had a lot of male readers who have been able to um, identify with the male characters in the book. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's pretty spicy. It's a survivor story. It's a love story. It's a, a uh, how to regain love story. <laughs> you know, it's 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 a lot of different stories in one and it um, really I'm is. looking forward to putting it out putting the uncut version out very soon <laughs> like I said sign mine to send my uncut version because I know it's going to be good because just this version alone <laughs> people was really good it was good I mean I do nursing I was at work like ooh. you know i try to get all my sister's books because that's how i support you know i love on everybody and i support everybody but you know what that book made me know you a little bit better and i heard your story in person but hearing it in person and then reading in your book was two different things in person i really felt it because i saw your pain Mm -hmm. that you had and how you suffered, you understand? And how you had to deal with it. So seeing it in person, I felt really even more tied and closer to you because I said, I can, I can emotionally attach myself to that, but I emotionally attached myself with the book too. So, you know, I just think when we go through these things, people don't really, understand that it's deep embedded in you and it takes a whole lot of work to just get past to write a book to do anything like that even to stand up and tell your story right. you understand it takes courage it does and this is what we want other people to realize yeah yeah and you have that courage tiffany you have a lot of that courage no matter what you go through each and every day, you got that courage. And that's why I always encourage you and tell you, I love you and, and it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. The you devil's already ugly. I know, I don't mean to make you cry because we're going to get to some good stuff too. But I have to tell these people how you are really, this woman is so genuine and I know the battles. I know the battles. I've been there. I know the battles. But now... You're in these battles, but guess what? You're still overcoming because you got uh, your Cyrus, uh, what is the Cyrus Friday? You have BVP mentors. Tell me about these great things that's coming out of Tiffany. (laughs) Well, yeah, we just started our um, BV Kids mentoring program. Um, We have um, about 13 kids right now, and we have about 11 mentors, and all of our mentors are either advocates or community leaders or business owners. Um, you are one of our mentors as well, and Heaven is your mentee. Um, yes. Our 
the whole reason for starting BVP Kids was one, to do what you said earlier, getting the kids out in the community, learning about being advocates for themselves and for others, but also just to show them that there's more to life than, than YouTube and being on TV and being on your phone and the violence that is happening in our schools and in the community, getting them out, serving others. That's a big part of it, serving others, not just yourselves. Yeah, not just um, yourself. yeah, yeah. So it's been, it took off. Um, we have added on um, a case manager. Um, we have a lot of amazing mentors. We have a lot of great kids. I'm so happy with the kids that we are um, supporting um, this school year. And so we started that. Um, it started last year, but we really took off this year because this time we started before the school year started, whereas last right. year we started in the middle of the school year. Um, so it, it's taking off. Um, if you have kids that you think um, would love to get out into the community, definitely reach out to myself um, or Katrina to get your kids involved in the community. Um, so we have the Speak Up and Inspire series. It's going to be celebrating a year in January. I'm so happy and I'm very Thank proud you. of the that we have built um, to just, you know, give survivors, to give advocates, to give community leaders, to give just our neighbor next door a platform to talk about all the great things that they're doing in the community. So I'm looking forward to celebrating the one-year anniversary of the Speak Up and Inspire series in January with you. <laughs> I am so excited about that. Now, that's one event I know I'm definitely going to be at because I think, you know, I thank Tiffany myself for opening the door and inviting me to be on Speak Up and Inspire. I think that kind of brought me out. We shared the tears together with some ladies. And I, I, you know, these ladies are amazing. You know, Ava, Ava Terry, is it Terry, Ava? Yeah. Ava Terry, I mean. <laughs> Yes, her, uh, Alicia. I mean, it's just, it was like a platform of tears going across yeah. with everybody's story. But that was showing unity and that's where that sisterhood started and tiffany is about that sisterhood she's always inviting somebody to come and speak like she just said to this man on here she's always opening her heart to giving back and saying here i'm going to give you this platform to talk about your business or to talk about your organization this is what we need more of for men and women you know we need this i mean i have seen tiffany interview a child who was doing yeah. positive stuff. I can't remember her name, but that girl was positive. And you know, yes. <laughs> yes. And I was like, that is awesome. You know, this is what Tiffany is doing. So when you see people doing these positive things, why would you not want to join with them? It was no doubt or no question when you asked me to join with Butterfly Vision Project because I love what you do and I love where your heart is where your heart is for giving back to others. And Tiffany, with that being said, just like your overall look on your organization, on your mentor program, on your on Fridays when you're posting everybody's events, what does Tiffany want everybody to know about? life with all of these things what is your main goal um i would say to just be your authentic true self i think a lot of times when we've been through so much trauma and so many negative experiences that we lose ourselves um and i think it's just really really important for us to just live our our true authentic self to just be who we are and to um, be able to express ourselves and share, you know, our experiences, because it's been therapy for me. I know that it's very therapeutic for others, but you just never know who you're going to help. You never know. Um, I know you've shared this experience, too, when you've gone and you've talked somewhere, um, and it might not even be a DV event, or it might not even be a sexual assault event, but just speaking up and just talking about your experiences. And there's always somebody at the end who comes up to you and says, you know what? I'm a victim too, or I've been a victim too. Yeah. Um, I think that when, when we care more, I, I don't want to say this, let me take that back. When we care about others, right. then we do things to help others. 
And I think that if all of us, you know, I'm not perfect, you know, you're not perfect. No, none of us are perfect. But Mm -hmm. I've always, ever since I was a child, have always been big about community service and helping others when I can, Mm -hmm. where I can. And I just think that if everybody would just take a moment to just help someone else, whether it's opening the door, helping somebody take the groceries in, you know, putting $5 in their hands, so they can get something to eat. Just right. it's so many bad things going on every single day. So many people losing their lives. I just want people to just stop for a moment and just help somebody, no matter how big or small. We can all and, do it. And if we can do it. Improve. Yeah. You see what you just said? No matter big or small, stops focusing on the bigger things because the smaller things is just, they count just as much as the big things. In life, God gave his life for us and it, it did not matter if it was big or small. He was giving it for us to have our freedom and for us to be able to speak the truth that comes from him. So why do we always worry about numbers and what's big or small? It's the point of giving back love and compassion because God filled us with love and that love is supposed to shine through us to give to others. So as a community, as a in whole, we should be wanting to help one another. Mm -hmm. It should be no question for you to put your feelings aside. You know, I always say this to somebody. if, If you're mad at someone and you're holding some type of feelings against them, if you've seen them in a situation would you turn your back on them just because you're mm-hmm. mad about something really small? Would you really mm-hmm. see them in a desperate moment and not try to help? Mm-hmm. You know what I say to that to that question? I don't want to help, regardless of how I feel, or regardless of what you argument. Because everybody's all down sometimes somebody pick you up. You can't just turn your number yeah. people and walk past them as if it doesn't matter. Lives matter all lives nobody's perfect like you said yeah so why do we turn our nose up and walk past people like oh we ain't doing nothing for them no you can't be like that we're not the judge yeah god is one big example and i'm glad you said that is when we um go and do the free hug events we like to go to areas where there's a lot of people um one of the places if you know charlotte we go to the transit a lot and when we're giving out hugs or fist bumps because not everybody's a hugger um Mm -hmm. one of me when we do our is that everyone that comes out and volunteers they don't Mm -hmm. shy away from talking to the home they don't shy Mm -hmm. away from the person who who um shows signs of mental illness we are all out there to show love for everybody regardless of who they are um and so i think that um you know there's been times where there's been somebody that i don't necessarily like or has done something to me but then i find out that maybe they had a death in the family or maybe you know something has happened to them i still reach out um it took me a while to do that But once Uh I was able to put aside, you know, my whatever was going on with me or, or why I didn't like the person or whatever, and actually reached out, I found that we were able to set aside our differences to help each other. And people have done the same for me. So, you know, you're right. Sometimes we just really have to put our pride in our back pocket and, and reach out and help people that we, that you know, really might not expect us to help, but we might be the ones that can actually help. So Exactly. And someone said, and sometimes it's more impactful impactful when you do it in a smaller group. And that's true because you might end up more uh, doing a one-on-one with somebody. Um, And, you know, things like that, people remember, and they will actually go and tell somebody else about your organization, believe it or not. They're going to say, man, you know, I went over here and she, and they had the hugs, you know, the free hugs and gay <laughs> food. And we remember it's called Butterfly. It was my first year doing that with you guys. And I felt 
great doing it because, you know, we hug some people, we talk to people. And like you said, we wasn't ashamed to talk to homeless people because everybody can be up and we can be like them any day. That's you so know, true. things happen. Things That's happen. True. So don't never turn your nose up because you can be way up here and be way down there real quick. That's why you got to be grateful yeah. and prayful and thankful for what God has provided for you. Oh, let me not go into my preaching. No, go ahead. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, that's, that's, you know me, I'm just, I have never been like this. And now that I know my God so good, I make sure I always lift him up. I give him the glory all the time because I would not be here if it was not for him. So ladies and gentlemen, all I'm saying, people like Tiffany and I, we are so blessed to have come through our situation and to take our situation not for pity, but for glory and for encouraging and uplifting others to do the same as us and to show them that you're not alone. You heard Tiffany say it, you're not alone. I don't know if you're off the program mm -hmm. right now and contacted Tiffany on I and she still talk to them because they need someone to listen. They need someone to That's true. comfort them. They need someone to be there and to not them. in return, they will open up to you as they see the genuine love and compassion for you. And Tiffany, my sister, you are the best. One of the best. I don't like to make I, I was tears of oh. joy because I Just much great work. I just recognize it every day. I don't care how many tears you cry, how much pain you feel. Is it? And watching you, your blessings are gonna come through like they never came through before. Just got us and have faith. So you have I really appreciate that thank you so much <laughs> thank you I, I I can truly say that I feel blessed now um, because I, I think every single time I, I speak or I talk to someone or I do interviews I always say it's not about me it's mm -hmm. not about me. it's about me speaking up and inspiring others to speak up because it can mean life or death for you, for me, um, and just taking 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 the time to just open your mouth and say, I need help or I'm here to help you can make a big difference. And yeah, we don't see be that. ashamed. Right. Yeah. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed because you know, every someone's been there before. It, you're never alone. Never alone. Someone has been there. Someone has walked that same path as you. And, you know, we had somebody who had to talk to us, too. Like what we're doing now, somebody had to come and talk to us, like Miss Benton or Miss Merriman. Someone had to That's talk true. to you. So you can't do your walk by yourself, okay? It, it has to be someone there who's in your corner, support you and it's good to have a support system and tiffany right. you have a good support system in your life and um that's great and your kids i love that so we just connected like that i like that so i like my mentor this work keep this great work don't ever get discouraged don't get discouraged yeah it don't get that's true that's and true look, I, i've survived a, a lot of devils and just like you you survived a lot of devils and so we're going to keep and keep creep keep I didn't do for a long time is pray and actually put my burdens on God and once I did 
and um, saw that, again, I wasn't alone and I had people that were there for me. Um, I was able to, to, to really just, just earn my wings and just fly, just keep flying, keep flying. Yeah, I'm very happy, very happy with the, the road I've taken and sharing my story. Yes, you're right. And when you write that next book, that's going to help somebody else too. Because when you get an uncut version, <laughs> that's going to be seeing if it really is, okay? <laughs> there's no cutting, no corners. There's not no covering up and trying to say it a different way. It's just going to be raw and cut and you're going to understand it just like that. It is very uncut. Yes, it will be. <laughs> you, know I'm silly. you know I am so silly. I am silly, but I could be silly with you like that because you know, giving me the opportunity to be a co-host here is like is wonderful that you trust me to do that. You are my kindred mm -hmm. things the same. So this is perfect. <laughs> 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 You're so oh cool. gosh, I'm so scared. I'm a mess. I'm a mess, but you know, I'm a mess in a good way, you guys. Don't get it wrong. I I'm when I'm trying to be serious, it's time to be serious. <laughs> yep. Yep. Definitely. Definitely. I love you. So how can some um how can the people get in touch with you in case somebody is on here right now in the need? of having someone to talk to in the need of knowing where they can get some resources. How can I reach you, Tiffany? Um, well, they can reach me directly or personally, should I say. Um, I have my personal profile is public. So it's Tiffany Sunshine Brown, that is me. Um, also Butterfly Visions Project, um, you can send us a message there. And you can also call me. Um, my number is out there. I have no problem with you calling me if you need me. 980-202-2059. Again, 980-202-2059. Um, you can get my book, Reality Check. It's on Amazon. You have to search Reality Check by Tiffany Brown. Um, or you can give me another month or two and you can get the uncut version for both. It's really up to you. <laughs> but I am very I'm, accessible. I'm very accessible. Copy. <laughs> okay, and that's right. But you guys hear me saying, I'm going to get the first copy. I'm going to get the first copy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there's going to be um, some pieces of reality check, the one that's already out, that I'm actually, okay. there's like one part of the storyline I'm taking out and I'm replacing with some juiciness. So, um, so yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm Look excited. Forward. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. You got me excited for this book. I can't wait. I cannot wait. I cannot. Now I'm a, now you got me feeling like, wow, well, my book needs to be juicy. Of course, Katrina has a book too, uh, Journey Towards Purpose with Nine Under uh, yeah. Other Women. It's very, very deep and it's about our personal story and our journey. And that's why it's Journey Towards Purpose. You can purchase can it now. You I can't I, Yes, I can't wait to get the first copy so everybody can start buying it. And it's it's not even about money. It's just about healing, healing yes. and overcoming your trials and tribulations. These nine women are going to tell some, some powerful movement mm -hmm. of how they do that, okay? And, of course, your girl Katrina Thomas is in there, too. And some things that I say, you may find it kind of hard to believe, but it did happen. <laughs> It did happen. <laughs> it did happen. But hey, you're looking at somebody in front of you who's stronger and wiser. And uh, that knowledge has made me greater and made me a better person. I'm not self-absorbed anymore. I'm not about turning my head to people in their situations and thinking that they can't, you know, that I'm better than them. So God mm -hmm. brought me through to be a new Katrina as Tiffany is a new Tiffany now. And we're on this journey of saving as many lives as we can. My sister, I bow. I, I applaud you. I love oh. you. Thank you so <laughs> much you. for me. This interview came all messed up, but you know what? What God is meant to be heard will be heard. You understand? The devil always will come in, but you know what? We made it through, and just some of the important things that you said, I know somebody is taking that now and applying it and thinking about doing something different. 
This I is so. Speak Up. Yes. This is Speak Up and Inspire. I'm Katrina Thomas, one of the co-hosts. And I am so <laughs> excited to be doing this job now. As I do it more and more, I'm getting more used to it. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, we got to work on these signals. And <laughs> Tiffany, yeah. God bless you. Yeah. God Thank bless you. So you. You're welcome, love. Have a great night. Get you some rest. Mm -hmm. You guys, if you did not get that book, remember what it is. Reality check. Go. Copy is coming soon to you, but go get that book because I guarantee you, once you read it, you're not gonna want to stop. So, God bless, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Zip for Speak Up and Inspire. To stay tuned to the next time when uh, Tiffany is doing an interview, we know it's gonna be powerful, and it will be somebody else who is here to share what they're doing to give back to their community. God bless, yes. peace, and love. Good night, everybody. Yes, ma'am. Bye.